Logarithmic Differentiation Level 1 The calculation of derivatives of complicated functions involving products, quotients, or powers can often be simplified by taking logarithms and exploiting their algebraic properties to simplify the function into a derivative-friendly form. The steps required for logarithmic differentiation is as follows. First, take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation y equals f of x and use the laws of logarithms, specifically the product to sum law, the quotient to difference law, and the exponent to multiplier law to rewrite the function. Second, differentiate implicitly with respect to x. And lastly, solve the resulting equation for y prime, or dy or dx. Be on the lookout for functions where the range of the function is less than zero for some values of x. Recall that the natural logarithm function is not defined for values of x that is less than zero. We can fix this small glitch by taking the absolute value of both sides and using the derivative of a natural logarithm of the absolute value of x to compute the derivative. All right, let's see this technique in action. Find a derivative of g of x equals the quantity 3x plus 2 raised to the power of 4 times the quantity x raised to the power of 3 minus 2 raised to the power of 5. First step, we write g of x as a dependent variable y, and then we take the natural logarithm of both sides. The whole point of taking natural logarithms is to simplify the expression into a derivative friendly form by using the laws of logarithms to rewrite the function. So here we have a product of two different functions. So we can apply the product to sum rule to rewrite the expression as follows. In addition, we could bring down the exponents on each term. And now here, the function 3x plus 2 attains negative values at given x values. In order to take a natural logarithm, we need to actually take the absolute value of this function. Likewise, the function x cubed minus 2 also attains negative values. So we also need to take the natural logarithm of the absolute value of this function. So now that we rewrote the function into a derivative friendly form, we take derivatives of both sides. The derivative of the left hand side is going to be equal to 1 over y times y prime after applying the chain rule. The derivative of the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 3x plus 2 is going to be equal to 1 over 3x plus 2 times 3 where we apply the chain rule to find the derivative of the inner function, plus 5 times the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed minus 2. Here, we apply the chain rule with the outer function equal to the natural log and the inner function equal to x cubed minus 2. Taking the derivative we have, that's going to be equal to 1 over x cubed minus 2 times 3x squared. So to find an expression, we have the following. And now, the third and final step is to solve for y prime. So here we multiply both sides by y, and we have the following expression. And lastly, we want, we want the derivative in terms of x only. So here what we want to do is substitute y with the original function we started with. Doing that, we have that the final derivative is going to be equal to the quantity 3x plus 2 raised to the power of 4 times the quantity x cubed minus 2 raised to the power of 5 times the quantity 12 over 3x plus 2 plus 15x squared over x cubed minus 2. You can also simplify the last quantity by finding a common denominator and simplifying, and if you do, you end up with the following expression. For the most part, don't bother rewriting the expression into a different form. Uh, the first form is uh, sufficient. Let's try the next one. Find the derivative of r of x equals the square root of x times e raised to the power of x cubed times the quantity x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 5. Alright, first step, let's replace r of x with y. And then we take the natural logarithm of both sides. And then we use the properties of logarithms to rewrite the expression into a derivative friendly form. And here, since we have a product of three functions, we rewrite them as a sum of logarithms, as follows. And then for the first term, we rewrite the square root of x as x raised to the power of 1 half. We bring down the 1 half, and we take the absolute value of x. Since the function x attains negative values at specific domain values. And for the second term, we bring down x cubed. And for the third term, we also bring down the x minus 5. And we have the following expression. Now here, the natural logarithm of e is just equal to 1. So the second expression simplifies to x cubed. And now we take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side is going to be equal to y prime over y. And for the right side, the first term is going to be equal to 1 over x plus 3x squared. And the third term requires the use of the chain rule. The outer function here is the natural logarithm. And the inner function is x squared minus 1. Notice that we take the absolute value because the function x squared minus 1 attains negative values at given domain values. So taking the derivative, we have that's going to be equal to 1 over x squared minus 1 times 2x. 
So to find the expression, we have the following. And then lastly, we need to solve for y prime. So we multiply both sides by y. And here we substitute y with the original function we started with. So in the end, the final derivative is going to be equal to the square root of x times e raised to the power of x cubed times the quantity x squared minus 1 raised to the power of 5 times the quantity 1 over 2x plus 3x squared plus 10x over x squared minus 1. So for the final example, let's try one which requires all three laws of logarithms. Find a derivative of h of x equals the cube root of the quantity sine of x squared times tangent of x raised to the power of 4 over the quantity x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2. All right, so first step, we need to we need to substitute h of x with y. And then we take the natural logarithm of both sides. We rewrite the cube root as a fraction of power. And then we use the property of logarithms to bring down the one third. And then here, what we do is we use the property of logarithms to rewrite the product into a sum and the quotient into a difference. Doing so gives us the following expression. And then here we, we distribute the one third to all three terms. So we have the following. And now we bring down the corresponding exponents on each term. We use the property of logarithms to bring down the two. And since sine of x attains negative values at corresponding x values, we need to apply the absolute value. In the second term, we also bring down the exponent. And we apply the absolute value since tangent of x also attains negative values at corresponding x values. And in the last term, we bring down the two. Notice that x squared plus 1 is always positive. It does not require the application of the absolute value symbol. So now we take the derivatives of both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side is, is again equal to y prime over y. And here the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of sine of x is going to be equal to 1 over sine of x times cosine of x. The derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of tangent of x is going to be equal to 1 over tangent of x times secant squared of x. And lastly, the derivative of the natural log of x squared plus 1 is going to be equal to 1 over x squared plus 1 times 2x. So in the final expression, we have the following. And the final step is to solve for y prime. We will multiply both sides by y. We have the following. Then here, we substitute y with the original function we started with. The final derivative is going to be equal to the cube root of sine of x squared times tangent of x raised to the power of 4 over the quantity x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2 times the quantity 2 thirds cotangent of x plus 4 times secant squared of x over 3 times tangent of x minus 4x over 3 times the quantity x squared plus 1. Okay, and there you have it. That's how you use logarithmic differentiation to find a derivative of complicated functions involving products, quotients, and powers. In our next video, we will use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative of functions of the form f of x raised to the power of g of x.